Right, so I've had quite a lot of people on Twitter and places like that, mostly Americans, um, people that are not from the UK, asking what is going on uh, with this thing, the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill 2021. So I thought, you know, let's just do this little video, let's go over it, talk about it. You know, a lot of this, I guess, will be my opinion, but I think that this applies to anyone that quite likes living in a free country because this bill is um, unquestionably authoritarian. It's looking like it's going to pass into British law. This is absolutely massive. Um, and a lot of people are just kind of docile and are like, uh, whatever, not really interested. Um, and I think people should be very interested because this is fucking mental. Uh, and it's looking like it's going to pass. So let's go into it. Let's see what we're looking at. Um, we'll start at the beginning. So the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill 2021 update 10th march 2021 okay so it starts with a message from the metropolitan police commissioner Christina dick uh Christina dick has been the commissioner of the met police since 2017 she's a very big noise in the policing community if you like you know she's like the most senior police officer in the whole of the uk let's start so this is what Christina dick says Ever since the first large-scale Extinction Rebellion protest in April last year, I have been talking publicly and with the government about the potential for change to powers and to legislation that would, that would enable the police to deal better with protests in general, given that the act that we work to, the Public Order Act, is now very old, dating to 1986 but specifically to deal with protests where people are not primarily violent or seriously disorderly, but as in this instance, had an avowed intent to bring policing to its knees and the city to a halt and were prepared to use the methods we all know about. Uh, we all know they did to do that. So for anyone that doesn't know Extinction Rebellion, it's, you know, their heart's in the right place, but it's kind of a rich kid, liberal environmental group that they want to do something good they want to they want to kind of bring attention to the fact that big corporate businesses are basically killing the world pollution you know climate change all of that we're fucking up the world and extinction rebellion was quite a big movement for a while here in the uk but again they kind of thought that they could change the world by like appealing to mps and talking to rich celebrities and you know addressing the eu and all of that bullshit which if you know anything about climate change and pollution and the destruction of the environment, it's way too late for any of that to make a difference, to be honest. But that's beside the point. Christina Dick, I think, is mentioning the Extinction Rebellion because a lot of people in the UK, you know, your general average working man and woman, people got pretty pissed off with Extinction Extinction Rebellion because they kind of, they caused a nuisance, but I don't think they properly fought through what they were doing like they would they would set up these tent cities in london you know like tents everywhere and they would disrupt the traffic which you know it's their right to do so we don't live in a despotic regime um yeah we live in a free country you know ostensibly and we have democracy and it's their right to do this if they want it was a static process protest they weren't violent however they did some very dumb shit so for example there was one scene where these kind of middle class kids were jumping on the top of um, tube trains in London, trying to stop peeps, trying to stop the tube, you know, as part of their protest. And they did it at rush hour when a lot of people are just trying to get to work. You know, the people of London, people of England, people of the UK, not got time to be listening to this when they're trying to get to work. You know, a lot of people are in very fragile employment as it is. And if they turn up to work and say, yeah, sorry, I'm late. There was some, you know, Extinction Rebellion kid was stopping the trains to, prove something you know as a part of his protest now you know I, I get it that peaceful protest is not always that useful um it doesn't do a lot often but at the same time this was not the way to go and it pissed a lot of people off but anyway that's beside the point but i do think the reason she's mentioning extinction rebellion is because a lot of people might read this and go like, oh yeah they were annoying who cares but actually if you look here, so, but specifically to deal with protests where people are not primarily violent or seriously disorderly. So basically they want increased powers to stop a protest that is not violent uh, and is not seriously disorderly. I mean, we live in a free country. Why do the police want further powers to do that? Why do they want to stop non-violent and non-disorderly protest? I mean, you know, it, it's just, it doesn't seem right to me. I don't know. Anyway let's get into what they're saying so number one what are we going to do 
The measures in the bill will allow the police to take a more proactive approach in managing highly disruptive protests, causing serious disruption to the public. Doesn't state up top what the proactive approach would be. I think it probably should. Um, but anyway, number two, how are we going to do it? Provisions in the bill will widen the range of conditions that the police can impose on static protests to match existing police powers to impose conditions on marches. So I think what they're saying here, it's written like gobbledygook because that's the way it is. But I think what they're saying is, um, so they want to um, use the powers they have against protest marches on static protests. So these days, if you want to go on a march through the middle of London, you have to kind of apply to do it, legally do it, have a start time, an end time, agree where you're going to go, all of that. To be honest, I think if you want to make a point and do a protest and a protest march, I, I really don't get why you would inform the police of this, but I guess, you know, it, it keeps everything running a little bit smoothly. I've been to protests like this, covered them as a journalist. So it says here, this measure will enable the police to impose conditions such as the start and finish times and maximum noise levels on static protests. The police already have the power to impose such conditions on marches. So again, they want to use these powers on static protests um, you might remember the Occupy Stock Exchange protest, which ended up actually outside of St. Paul's Cathedral. It's one of the first things I ever covered as a journalist on the ground. Um, I was like, what, maybe 21? So it was like 2011, something like that. Anyway, um, the the that was a static protest. People gathered with tents. It went on for a while, weeks and weeks, and people were saying, look, you know, we're protesting kind of against corruption in the banking system, um, against hyper-capitalism crippling people, and against, you know, criminal, white-collar criminals just constantly getting away with crimes, which they still do, you know, no difference was really made. But again, it was it was quite a big thing, especially for young people. Some people, it was the first protest they were ever part of. Very interesting situation. So anyway, that, now I guess with these powers, they would have to say, we'll start on this day and we'll leave on this day. Well, that doesn't really become a protest then because... Whether you're going to win or not is beside the point. A protest is to say, hey, we're protesting because of this. Now, a static protest, often people say, we're not moving until this happens. Well, with this, basically, they have to say, OK, well, we'll leave on this date whether it happens or not, which doesn't seem like a protest to me. It just turns it into a bit of a show, you know, um, which I guess the police would be happy with because police don't want protests, as we can see here. Um, also, this noise level. Now, you know, they want to they wanna arrest people or stop the protest if the maximum noise level uh, is exceeded. But it doesn't say decibels. It doesn't say what the, the maximum noise level here is. Um, I guess that's at the police's discretion. Now, if you've ever been on the wrong end of the British police or on any end of the Met Police, British police, um, in general, their discretion varies rapidly, you know. They can turn on you like that. So, honestly, this is worrying already. But let, let's carry on. Maybe they will say about the decibel range and all of that. Uh, they want to broaden the range of circumstances in which police may impose conditions on a protest. This measure will broaden the range of circumstances in which the police can impose conditions on protests, including a single person protest, to include where noise causes a significant impact on those in the vicinity or serious disruption to the running of an organization. Right, so, not only do they want to take the rules from the marching protests and put them on static protests, they want to decide that one person can be a static protest and that they want to basically stop that one person from doing it uh, if the noise causes a significant impact on those in the vicinity. Now, again, it doesn't say about decibels. It doesn't say what a significant impact is. So the police can just turn up and say, that's giving me an earache. See you later, essentially, I guess. Um, carries on. The Home Secretary will have the power through secondary legislation to define and give examples of serious disruption to the life of the community. Right. The Home Secretary will have the power through secondary legislation to define and give examples of serious disruption. Um, Preeti Patel is the Home Secretary. She has been since 2019. The Home Secretary is the head of office responsible for law enforcement, national security, immigration, and oversight of MI5. Um, made notes, made notes. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. So basically, Preeti Patel, who is openly authoritarian, we all know it, 
Um, she recently said that the way she got through the strain of COVID-19 lockdown was being able to embed with police raids and stuff like that, whereas everybody else was like, oh, I don't know, listen to music or rearrange my tie collection or whatever the fuck it is Tories do. Um, or politicians of any stripe, to be honest, fuck them all. But yeah, so, yeah, so basically she will be the one that decides, um, you know, what is a, quote, serious disruption to the activities of an organisation which are carried out in the vicinity of the procession slash assembly slash one person protest. This is madness. So basically put it this way, if there's a protest, right, and the, the Home Secretary, Preeti Patel, decides this is not looking good for the government. This is getting a lot of steam. This could be bad for us. They're making a point. People are joining them. They're getting popular support. Instead of saying, well, we're going to shut you down because we don't want any threat to our power, she can say, well, the noise level was too much. It caused too much disruption or too many cars got stopped in the road. Now it's illegal. Police go and arrest, go and arrest everybody. And now with this, they can do that. That, if you don't see that as dangerous, I don't know what to tell you. It could be a protest about anything that can be used against you for any reason. The Home Secretary has the discretion here. It's very, very dangerous and very vague. These regulation-making powers will clarify ambiguous cases where, if they arise, it would not be clear whether the threshold for the use of such powers have been reached. This will enable the police to make use of their powers with the confidence that they are doing so legally. So, these regulation-making powers will clarify ambiguous cases where, if they arise, it would not be clear whether the threshold for the use of such powers have been reached. So basically, they're saying this bill will allow the police to act, grab people up, arrest them, fling them in the bully van, um, because the Home Secretary will decide what the discretion is. Well, actually, it says it will clarify ambiguous cases it will clarify ambiguous cases for the police because the police can say, well, are we legally allowed to do this? Are we not? Well, yes, because when they have this piece of law, they can say, too much noise. That's why we're arresting you. Now, if you, they arrest you and you say, what the fuck are you arresting me for? This is a peaceful protest. This is a free country. They can say, oh, well, uh, I don't know. You know, they make up some ridiculous reason or whatever. Now they can just say, too loud. It's too loud. Too much disruption. That's all they have to say. Um, and they can get that permission from the Home Secretary who has stated time and again she's fully in favour of and on the side of the Metropolitan Police and the way they police. Now, if you have uh, any doubt that the Metropolitan Police are out of control or can go out of control, um, you can look at what happened on last Saturday, so March 14th, 2021, the Sarah Everard um, vigil where male police officers were violently arresting female protesters who were protesting the fact that a metropolitan police officer murdered a young woman in London. Um, let's probably just go into that quickly. So March 3rd, Sarah Everard, God rest her soul, 33 year old woman, she goes missing. Um, she was heading home to a house in Brixton. March 6th, the Met Police um, say that, yep, yeah, she's missing, CCTV is released. I've made some notes here. Uh, she was walking through Clapham Common in South London. March 9th, the Met Police arrested a serving Met Police officer in connection with Sarah's murder. Um, they also arrested a currently unnamed woman. The serving Met Police officer was Wayne Cousins, 48 years old. He was not on duty at the time. He was a Met Police officer uh, either way. And then... Um, on March 10th, they confirmed that the police officer, uh, Wayne Cousins, was arrested on suspicion of murder and kidnap. Remains were found in the woodlands in Ashford, Kent. Wayne Cousins lives in uh, Kent. Um, Wayne Cousins, 48 years old. He was attached to an armed unit. He guarded parliamentary estates and embassies in London. His main job was to patrol diplomatic buildings he lives in deal ken well right now he lives in a prison cell um but yeah so that's wayne cousins you know pretty serious police officer pretty serious member of the met there was a very um lukewarm response from the met police you know when it turned out that actually one of their own has been arrested for kidnapping um or arrested and charged for kidnapping and murdering allegedly this young woman sarah everard so there's this vigil um and 
people go there, thousands of people go there to say, you know, we want to pay our respects, enough is enough. Why are young women being kidnapped, murdered, you know, treated like shit all of the time in the streets, whatever. So they go there, it's their right, they go there, they want to protest, and rightly so. But it wasn't like a violent protest, they went to a vigil, um, you know, and they said, oh, well, this is, this is what we want to do, we want to honour Sarah's memory. Um, the police let it happen all day, one of the royal family members went, Kate, I don't know what she is, future queen maybe, probably, I don't know. She went there, which, you know, it's all right, no problem. Um, and it was all okay. Then in the night, the police just uh, just start arresting people, violently arresting people. Like I said, you got male police officers grabbing females, holding them down on the ground with their fucking knees at the vigil for a woman who was murdered by a male Met police officer. You, you couldn't get the optics any worse. There was, you know, a more left-wing element of the, of the vigil was kind of the people that were arrested. And, you know, got a lot of these, like, you know, everyday people are like, oh, yeah, well, it was the leftists, it was Antifa, like, all of this bullshit. I mean, it's up to them. They're a part of our society. They are allowed to protest the same way you are. And they weren't causing trouble. They weren't causing trouble. I know people were there. I've seen the live footage. I've seen all the footage. They were not causing trouble. It was their right. They were allowed to do it. Now, under some kind of COVID provision, I think it was the police said, yeah, we're going to drag you down and do this. Horrible optics, very disturbing. A lot of people are rightly very angry. Anyway, let's get back to this. Um, so this will enable the police to make sure of their powers with the confidence that they are doing so legally. Again, it just gives them a coverall. They can just go in and disrupt any protest they want with this bill and just say it's too loud, you know, or, or it's too disruptive. That's all they have to say because it's very ambiguous here. Um, bullet point here, amend the offence relating to the breaching of conditions. <laughs> This measure will close a loophole which some protesters exploit. Some will cover their ears and tear up written conditions handed to them by the police so that they are likely to evade conviction for breaching conditions on a protest as the prosecution have to prove that the person knowingly fails to comply with the condition imposed. The bill will change the threshold for the offence so that it is committed where a person knows or ought to have known that the condition has been imposed. This is outrageous. So now, the bill will change the threshold for the offence so that it is committed where a person knows or ought to have known. That's the dangerous part in this, in my opinion. You can take them to court and just say, well, they were at the protest, they ought to have known what the conditions were, guilty, doesn't matter. Maybe they didn't know, but they ought to have known. Fucking hell. Also, like, what if someone is deaf? <laughs> you know, this is, this is a funny thing. You know, like, oh, well, people cover their ears. They don't know. What if they're deaf, uh, deaf and, and the, uh, the, the police can't sign or whatever? There's just so many murky points to this. You know what I mean? Um, bullet point, uh, they want to restate the common law offense of public nuisance and statute. That, again, public nuisance. The police decides, um, Preeti Patel can now decide, the Home Secretary will now decide what public nuisance is, and it has a very slim threshold here. Like I said, it can be based on noise. This is very dangerous. Again, it will give them the ability to stop any protest they want, saying it's a public nuisance because it's either too loud or it's disruptive. They don't have to branch out on why it's disruptive or by what decibel measure it's too loud. They can just say that. If you don't think that's dangerous, you're an idiot, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, the bill will implement a recommendation by the Law Commission to introduce a statuary offence of public nuisance and repeal the existence, existing common law offence. This will provide clarity to the police and potential offenders, giving clear notice of what conduct is forbidden. Right, I need to read that again. This bill will implement a recommendation by the Law Commission to introduce a statutory statutory offence of public nuisance. So just a standard, this is public nuisance. This is public nuisance. Um, man. Uh, and it will repeal the existence existing common law offence. Okay. This will provide clarity to the police and potential offenders giving clear notice of what conduct is forbidden. So there will be very strict rules for protests now. The police will say, if this gets too loud, you will be arrested. It's that simple. But what is too loud? It doesn't say what's too loud and what isn't too loud. Also, again, we live in a free country. We are allowed to go out in the street and protest and play music and do all of that stuff, you know? It shouldn't be this way that they just decide, oh, it might be too loud. It's madness, man. 
Uh, they want to ensure vehicular entrances to the Parliament estate remain unobstructed. This measure will enable the police to direct an individual to cease obstructing vehicular entrances to Parliament and make it an offence not to comply with such a direction. This will protect the right of access to the parliamentary estate for MPs. What fucking right of access? Why do they have right to access into their building to come up with these kind of laws, but the people don't have right to stand in front and say, hey, it's not right, you need to listen, we're gonna block your route to work. I guess it comes under again, this disruption thing. Quickly, very quickly, within two pages, it's how do we protect the MPs from being disrupted from their work? Uh, this will protect the right of access to join, sorry, to the parliamentary estate for MPs. Peers and others will, with business there, as recommended in the Joint Committee on Human Rights in the 2020 report on democracy, freedom of expression, and freedom of association. Threat to MPs. So again, doesn't say what a threat constitutes. Um, well, recommended in the Joint Committee on Human Rights in their 2020 report. But basically, if you know about like G20, um, all of that stuff, where all these global leaders come together to circle jerk each other and you know nothing really happens um and there are you know despotic regimes are invited into these countries to talk and people will often rightly so protest that and say no we don't like them being here if they're here we're going to protest it this would stop that uh, in any meaningful way because often these people will go to the parliamentary buildings um i've been to protest as a journalist and all of them mostly start at parliament square and because it's ambiguous what disruption and public disruption and public nuisance is, this doesn't necessarily have to be completely blocking the absolute entrance. It's, this is how I'm reading it. I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. But the way I read this, it seems that you could gather in Parliament Square and now because it's so ambiguous, the police could say, well, Preeti Patel said that this is enough of a public nuisance and disruption. And here it says you're not allowed to block anything near the parliamentary estate for MPs. Um, so therefore you're all in prison <laughs> you're all arrested this is very dangerous man number three background freedom of assembly and freedom of expression are vital rights that the united kingdom fully supports really really that's interesting because we do sell weapons to despotic regimes that murder people based on their uh ethnic rights but you know that's okay apparently we uh we we fully agree with this <laughs> The rights of an individual to express their opinion and protest are a cornerstone of our democratic society. Yes, they are, and they should be. Now, I want to state clearly here, because people that don't know about my work will probably see this and say, like, oh, this guy is, hates England, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Oh, his surname's Hanrahan, he's this, he's that. Um, look, I don't hate England. I hate um, I hate the way things are going, um, and I don't like the, the history of, like, massacring people to steal land that England is known for, but I'm British, and... I love Britain in the sense of Britain is our culture, our people. That doesn't have to be someone born here and raised here. I don't believe in all that nationalist bullshit. But I do like the culture we have, the people we have, like my neighbours, this, that and the other. The way we all come together from all different backgrounds, the multicultural element that makes up Britain, I think is beautiful. And trust me, I've spent time in bad places. You know, like I've been, I've had my freedom taken away in despotic countries. I've been in prison in bad countries just for doing my work. Uh, as a journalist so i'm not saying that lightly you know like what we have it's not that bad it's not that bad there's a lot of problems there's problems with racism institutional racism and all of that and, and sexism i do understand that but when i love britain i say i love britain i love our people i love the way that we kind of push back against shit like this um to me Preeti patel and boris johnson that's not the britain that i like that's the establishment that's the very increasingly authoritarian government I think the fact that they're putting this uh, in a document like this is, is just so unbelievably um, laughable. Um, they're either doing it because they know that or they just think that, yeah, we are, we're defending democracy by making it harder for people to protest based on very, very basic arbitrary rules that the openly authoritarian um, Home Secretary can impose thanks to this. It's a collusion between Preeti Patel, the state, um, and the, the Met Police who, you know, as I mentioned recently, um, violently arrested women uh, at a vigil for um, a woman that was murdered by a member of the Met Police. Allegedly, he's been charged legal, legal, legal. Um, that shows you what kind of police they are. And actually, um, 
people have been calling for Cressida Dick, you know, she runs the Met, they've been calling for her to step down because of this awful handling of the vigil. You know, she should be fired in my opinion. I think it's disgusting the way they did that. I mean, you know, Britain looked like Turkey all of a sudden. Um, you know, and she has said that um, she's not stepping down and that anyone that criticizes her is an armchair critic. Basically saying the people don't understand how hard it is. Well, we do because we, we live next to the Met Police and I'm sure a lot of people watching this have been stop and search for fuck all. Anyway, let's carry on. There is and will remain a balance to be struck between the rights of the protester and the rights of individuals to go about their daily business. Now, this is fair, right? Now, the rights of the people to be able to go about their daily business. I do understand that, you know, this is what I was saying at the start. It was absolutely fucking ridiculous um that the um extinction rebellion kids jumped on top of a train and stopped normal people going to work however you know life is not always as we like it life is quite difficult and when you do have a democracy you don't just suddenly bring in laws to say okay no bad things for the people there there and there um and come on when you look at this that's clearly not the the rights of the individuals is clearly not the people they care about because the rights of the individuals versus the protest could change like night and day you know, you might say, well, I don't care about this. I'm sick of these protesters. But then the government might do something at a later date that you do care about. And then you want to protest and all of a sudden you're on the protest side. And then there are these arbitrary laws against you. So you have to think of it like that. It's like people that say, oh, well, you know, if you're not doing anything wrong, why do you care? Well, you know, what is not wrong on Monday could be wrong on Tuesday because of a piece of legislation like this. I do think that people need to, you know, think a little bit bigger you might say oh well those those idiot protesters they piss me off all right well, they might piss you off but again it's their right to do that um you don't have a right to not be pissed off either um we have to work out a situation amongst ourselves to stop people being idiots and again with this bill it's so ambiguous that um the rights of the individuals could be flipped on them if they're too loud it's crazy um anyway uh, however, there are instances where individuals at protest behave in a way that causes unjustifiable disruption or distress to others. Unjustifiable disruption to who? The state? To who? Distress to others? To, to who? What about when um, the police were arresting those young women and putting their knees on them? Um, that seemed like a lot of distress. What about when they unproportionately um, stop and search young black males? That seems like a lot of distress, you know? But all right that's when the police do it so it's okay i guess in recent years we've seen a significant change in protest tactics which have led to disproportionate amounts of disruption again it doesn't it doesn't say what is disproportionate the current legislation the police used to use to manage protests the public order act 1986 which was mentioned at the start this is what they want to totally revamp it sounds like they want to scrap it and make new rules to be honest um it was enacted over 30 years ago the commissioner of the metropolitan police service has called on the government to update this aging legislation to allow the police to safely and effectively manage the highly disruptive protests we see today. The Home Office has therefore engaged with police chiefs and commissioned Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Const Constabulary and Fire and Rescue Services to conduct an inspection into the policing of protests to understand what needs to be to ensure that the police can safely manage highly disruptive protests whilst preserving citizens freedoms of expression and assembly hang on hang on hang on so all right the home office has engaged police chiefs commissioned her majesty's inspectorate of constabulary and the fire and rescue services to conduct an inspection into policing uh into protests that make sure highly disruptive protests uh dealt with whilst preserving citizens freedoms so they're getting the police, the fire department, which nothing, no problem with them. They have to, they're talking about engaging them because you don't want a protest that stops a fire engine getting out, which is obvious. But they're going to use the police chief and Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary to decide what the police need to do to preserve the rights uh, and freedoms of expression of assembly for the people. But they're not asking the people. They're just asking the police. This is something else, man. Uh, the government is proposing several changes in the law which will improve the police's ability to proactively manage the most disruptive protests and provide punitive outcomes that reflect the seriousness of offences committed by protesters. 
I've read about this. Basically, they're, now they're saying they want to increase punishments for protests backed by these arbitrary rules. And I was reading yesterday that you can, um, under this bill, you could get up to 10 years in prison for toppling a statue. Um, bear in mind that the average time that a con convicted um, paedophile will go to prison for for sexually abusing a child in the UK the average sentence is under five years so you could get less time in prison for abusing a child the worst crime on earth in my opinion um, you could get more time in England uh, for toppling over a statue than you could for abusing a child under this new bill this is what Preeti Patel um, is in favor of so number four frequently asked questions um, what the fuck is this? <laughs> 4.1. Will these measures undermine freedom of expression? <laughs> right, so the police and the government that want to bring this in are answering the question for you. Will these measures undermine freedom of expression? No. So basically they're saying this thing we want to do that will make it a lot easier for us to arrest protesters based on very arbitrary rules. Are you worrying that it might uh, it might undermine freedom of expression? Just so you know, we the police who want to do this are telling you no it won't. You couldn't make this up, man. Uh, yeah. Will these measures undermine freedom of expression? No. Freedom of expression is a cornerstone of British democracy. The majority of protests in the England and Wales, protests in the England and Wales, typo, in the England and Wales are lawful and will be unaffected by these changes. Well, they won't be because you can now decide on the basis of a noise level that it's not lawful. They can decide that on the basis of a fucking level of volume, which is not at all once stated. What is it? What are the decibels that decide it's unlawful? These measures will balance the rights of protesters with the rights of others to go about their business unhindered. They will achieve this by enabling the police to better manage highly disruptive protests. I mean, I'm not going to go over it again, but I think it's very clear that they're, uh, you know... <laughs> It's like uh, they're, they're trying to scratch their own back here. 4.2, why are these measures needed? Existing public order legislation was passed in 1986 and is no longer fit for managing the types of protests we experience today. Now, this is quite unusual. If you look at protests from like 1986 or around that time, you're talking about um, poll tax riots, stuff like that, Brixton riots, very big, uh, not protests, but protests that turn into very violent clashes. We haven't seen anything nearly as bad as that since then. You know, I mean, even the IRA were around blowing up London back then. Um, very weird, very weird. Um, apparently it's no longer fit for managing the types of protests we experience today though. The highly disruptive, and, and again, it doesn't say why, just, just take their word for it, you know? The highly disruptive tactics used by some protesters cause a disproportionate impact on the surrounding communities and are a drain on public funds. For example, the Metropolitan Police Service's cost for policing Extinction Rebellion 2019 April uprising in London was over 16 billion. The Tories have just spent over two million pounds on um, making a really shitty stage. Um, and also um, both Labour and Tory MPs uh, recently effectively stole money from the taxpayer for AirPods whilst on lockdown so you know i think if you're moaning about this kind of money here maybe you should start bringing in laws to stop politicians stealing taxpayers money um first before you have a go at people for protesting and the reason it cost so much money was because there was such a huge police presence you chose to do that and you know i would understand if the extinction rebellion was some kind of violent thing but it really wasn't they said themselves in this document these measures will improve the police's ability to manage such protests, enabling them to dedicate their resources to keeping the public safe. How will protesters' rights be protected? When using these or existing public order powers, the police must act within the law and be able to demonstrate that their use of powers are necessary and proportionate. This is the problem. The police must act within the law. This whole document allows them to create a bubble to do what they want to the protesters and it makes it legal. <laughs> so they will be allowed to stop a single person protest, arrest that person for breaking these laws because they've brought these new laws into place. 
Anyway, it says uh, they must act compatibly with human rights, principle Article 10, freedom of expression, and Article 11, 11 freedom of association. I mean, the way I read this, I mean, giving the police more legal powers and then saying the same thing, that they must act within those new powers that they get. I mean, it, it's like sending an arsonist to put out a fire. It's just, it's ridiculous, to be honest. This is very serious, man. Like, this is a very big deal. Um, it makes it so that police and the Home Secretary can decide what is and isn't peaceful very easily. And when that happens, it basically says that they can decide, is this getting too serious? Is this a threat to our power? Okay, it's too loud and it's a disruption. Arrest everyone. They don't have to stop um, freedom of expression. I mean, they are, but they don't, they're legally saying, well, we're not stopping freedom of expression. These people were stopping the freedom of whatever. Uh, that we enacted in this new bill. So therefore, legally, we can do this. Very worrying. If you don't see why that's worrying, you're a dummy. 4.4. Uh, what conduct will the new public nuisance offence capture? The new statutory offence of public nuisance will cover the same conduct as the existing, existing common law offence of public nuisance. The offence captures conduct which ages, endangers the life, property, or comfort of the public. Comfort, again, who decides what the comfort is? Um, or to obstruct the public in the exercise or enjoyment of rights common to the public. Another thing this does is it very clearly puts a line between the public and protesters. I mean, protesters are not some kind of shipped in group, even if you are some kind of moron conspiracy theorist that thinks Soros drops in protesters. Um, you know, it's not that way. The public versus protesters. I mean, the protesters are a part of the public. You know, protesters don't come out of nowhere. You know, you don't see the police on the road marching and doing that. The, the protesters are part of the public. People protest because there's a problem with the government or a problem with whatever. There's a long history of protest in this country going back thousands of years, hundreds of years, whatever. Um, this is just very weird. It pits the public against protesters and very clearly to me is like saying they're the protesters, especially how it starts with Extinction Rebellion, which a lot of, you know, average working class men and women, your working man, your working woman, we're just fucking sick of them very cleverly pits everybody against protesters. Conduct captured will include nuisances such as producing excessive noise or smells or offensive or dangerous behavior in public such as hanging from bridges. Now, this is mad. I mean, don't fart at a protest, mate. You know, you might get arrested for excessive smell. Fucking hell. Conduct captured will include nuisances such as producing excessive noise or offence or dangerous behaviour in public. Again, what is dangerous behaviour? Who decides it? We already know that the Home Secretary and the police can, um, such as hanging from bridges, right? I mean, look, that's the end, by the way. I mean, this, this is a worry because basically, to sum up, what it's saying is, here's a load of rules that we kind of already have, but we want to consolidate them and we want to be able to say when those laws are being broken based on something kind of unmeasurable like the sound the decibels going on and it doesn't say how they're going to do that the police can just decide well it's too noisy so basically the home office can say we don't like this protest legally now you can stop it if it's too loud it doesn't matter if it's a political thing it is but it doesn't matter if you decide it's too loud you can stop it um this is very ambiguous very dangerous you know honestly it's probably gonna pass. People are kind of docile from it. It's a big worry. But anyway, I just wanted to go through it. Again, a lot of that was my opinion. You don't have to agree with me. It doesn't fucking matter. At the end of the day, you know, you can get this read it yourself. Um, if you don't like being free, you know, and you're one of these rules of rules people, that's up to you. But I think anyone that does kind of like being free, even if you don't like people protesting, even if you don't like what they're doing, realize it can happen to you one day as well. This law can be used against anybody, you know, so. I think we should care about this. Tell your friends about the police crime sentencing and courts bill 2021. This is fucking terrifying. But there we go. UK 2021.